Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 5 of our 3D Maze series which we're making on Scratch 3. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Just finished coding. Now I have to interject here that if you've not watched parts 1 to 4, please watch them before you come here because as you can see I'm picking up from where I left off and for this video to make sense you need to watch the previous ones. I will leave a card for you right here, please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 to 4. In which case, um, in this video, we'll be getting into the exit so that we can distinguish and the player has a way to know where the exit actually is. And we will also be setting up the thumbnail, which is going to be a fairly simple task. So let's get right into it. I'm going to do the thumbnail first because this is evidently a very, very, um, not very good looking um, image to start with. So you can click on upload a sprite and when you navigate through your files, you will find this um, sprite which says thumbnail and it's just going to be a simple thumbnail which I made uh, using an image and some text um, and what you can do is say when green flag is clicked um, go to x0 y0 and um, each and every time uh, we'll get into this forever loop and within this forever loop each and every time we will set the transparency um, to be full transparent which means we set the ghost effect to be 100 and we also need to make sure that this is always at the front because even if something comes in front of it, which is going to happen during the game, we need to make sure that this gets right back in front so that when we press the red flag, um, it's going to be back. Um, it's going to be back to the screen. So to do that, you can just add in um, a go to front layer, and this is going to make sure that everything ends up this way when we press the red flag. It's a simple way to add in a thumbnail. And it's going to look good when you either publish your project on scratch.mit website or if you just want to keep it this way within your main code. So either way, I'm going to leave it this way. And now we can head over to um, upload sprite once again. And now we're going to upload the exit. And you can click on exit.svg. And um, I'm going to start this off once again when the green flag is clicked. And just like the other sprites, I will be having um, an init function. So I'll head over to my blocks. I'll make a block called init sprite and I will also run without screen refresh so that this gets done very fast. So within this init sprite, I'm going to do a couple of things. So first, I will go to x198 and y is going to be 169. So I will just test that once quickly and it's going to be right at the top. So if you look at the maze here, it's going to be at this point. So when the player is moving and he finally gets to this part of the maze, he will see the maze um, in a different color. And when he walks into that color, um, the player is going to win. That's going to be the general idea of it. And um, after we go to that position, I will also add in this block of code, which says um, go to back layer. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want the maze in front of me in certain places, because that isn't exactly size to perfection. So go to back layer and that is pretty much going to be all I need as of now. So um, now I'm going to head back into the raycaster and within this raycaster before we repeat um, 500 by field a few times, I will be having an if then condition or rather an if else condition. And I will remove the set pen color from above. And what I will do instead is I will set the pen color to, um, to um, yellow in case we know the exit is, uh, I'm sorry, in case we know that the uh, we're hitting the maze wall and in case uh, we are not hitting the maze wall and instead we're hitting the exit, then I will change it to a, a bright green, uh, greenish color. And this is going to be the color that I'm going to change it to. Maybe I'll do it a little bit. Uh, I'll uh, finish this. Um, I'll change this color a little bit later. All right. So now we can head over to the dot. And here I'm going to make a new list and this one is going to be called objects. Okay. And um, within this objects list, uh, we will be treating it similar to distances, which means I'm going to delete all of it at the beginning. And um, each and every time we go through this loop, instead of just having, uh, if we're touching maze or the distance is greater than max site, we can just use another nested or within the or, and we can say here, if we are touching, not maze, 
but um, not maze, but where is that? Uh, the exit. And this also reminds me to add in a set ghost effect to 100, which I forgot to do, otherwise it's gonna be visible during the game and um, hence it would be very annoying. So set ghost effect to 100 and let me get back into the dot. Okay, so if we're touching the exit, then it means that we have to add exit to objects. And if we are touching the maze, then we will add, let's say M to objects. So I'm gonna have an if, if else condition. And what I'll do here is I will say, if we are um, touching the maze, and I think I mentioned this, but I will put, um, I will put touching uh, not maze here, but exit. Because remember I told you that the max direction, uh, I'm sorry, the max site is uh, is going to be something and beyond that point, we will see just the maze. So if I put maze here, then the exit is um, going to look green instead of you know looking uh, like the normal maze until the player looks closer. So it's important you have this as the if condition and not as the else. So if we're touching uh, exit, then what we will have to do is we will add uh, we will add an E to not distances, but objects. And if we're not touching um, exit, then we will add an M to objects. And now we can head back into the Raycaster and we can see if, if um, the particular item of distances. So if item C of distances is equal to M. And if it's equal to M, remember, it means that we are touching the maze and if we're touching the maze, then we will um, set the pen color to be yellow. And we can just put that right here, or okay, not that way. We can put this right here within this repeat field of view. And as a result of this, things are going to work pretty perfectly. So I'm gonna remove, um, I'm gonna hide the objects list, and I will have to quickly um, navigate through the maze. So, um, okay, I evidently messed up something because all my walls are green. So I set the pen color to be um, yellow in case the maze was M, which kind of seems to uh, be the right thing. So I will go through my code once and then I will be right back. All right, so I just went through my code and as it turned out, the error was simply the fact that I set it to be item C of distances instead of item C of objects. And now when we test out our code, you can see that things work perfectly and it looks like the way it uh, looked before. Um, but now I'm gonna have to navigate through the maze and um, once I do get near the exit, you will start to see something interesting happen. So this is gonna be the maze path and it's obviously pretty slow and it's gonna be way faster if you're not overloaded with background tasks. But anyway, let me go through this quickly. So I will have to go through this end here and um, the exit, remember, is going to be in a color green. So the player isn't gonna be able to see it until he gets extremely close. And all this are just the normal maze walls. And okay, there was a bit of lag there, so sorry about that. Um, I'm now I'm gonna navigate through this once again and things should be pretty nearby. So I'm almost there and you can see here, this uh, the exit at this point is still yellow, but only when the player gets closer does it turn to green. And I'm pretty sure you caught that change right there. And that is very intentional and that is the way I want it to be. And if you want to remove that you know, change, then you could just use um, the if else alternatively. Um, but that may result in a few more bugs, so you do have to be careful with regard to that. So I'm gonna leave it this way, and I think this looks pretty perfect. And that is pretty much uh, all I'll be doing in this video. In the next video, I'll be getting into the high scores and how we can set up a timer in order to achieve the desired result. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.